Here we are okay. in the transitions. Yeah, Welcome no. to part two of episode 28. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to it, and you are here too. How are you doing? I am doing well. Thank <laughs> you yeah. for asking. How was your day? We already went over that. <laughs> well, this is part it's two. two yeah. Now it's a musical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I am the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera is here inside your mind. I don't even see a mu- I haven't seen a musical in a long time. Me actually. neither. They did. Um, they had the Evil Dead musical here last summer, and I really wanted to Weird. go see it. And he's like, "My arm is now a saw <laughs> or a shotgun or whatever." Well, they have like uh, you could you could pay for splatter seats like the oh. front couple rows because they're like yeah. using the you know the stage blood uh-huh. um and i really wanted to go and i don't remember i think something came up or i just didn't have the money or something when it was coming around because i think it was like in july like right around my birthday and so vanessa wanted to take me for my birthday and mm-hmm. i was like that's that that's kind of tempting yeah um then i missed it because i suck so yeah well maybe another time i think um i i want to go see um the um, South Park one, uh, but not oh, oh, yeah. the Book of, Mormon. Book of Mormon. That's next I year. That. I know. Yeah, you were telling me they're coming we'll in. We'll have to remember to do that. that. And then we're going to go see a live show here next week Yep, on the 21st. you got to make sure to have I get off, off at 5.30. Should so. be fine. We'll just probably go right after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, i got to look at what time. Uh, Doug Benson uh, is a stand-up comic. For those of and, you who don't know. Um, he did uh, that Super High Me um, movie, um, which is a documentary where he stopped smoking weed for 30 days, and then he it was a play on mm-hmm. the uh, Super Size Me. Yeah. Um, but I've gone to see Doug Benson when he's in town uh, every year for the last uh, four years, mm-hmm. and this is his fifth year. Okay, I've gone the last three years. This is his fifth year here, so this will be my fourth time. Oh, okay. And uh, you've gone with me before? Yeah, this will be my Did you time. like uh, yeah. Doug Benson? I think that... Even if you don't, I don't. I don't listen to Doug Benson that much. Like I've listened to some of Santa, but it's pretty funny. Um, but it's always way better when you're just there, yeah. like live, and uh, surrounded by people who are all like really into it and being entertained. Um, the last comedy show that I actually went to was I think a couple of years ago, and it was it was one of the guys from the League that show. Oh, um, I, he's the one who plays Kevin. I can't I can't. Remember I know his name. I know. But he yeah. came into town, and his his stand up was hilarious, and it was really yeah. funny. But I, it was it was stand up that I was like I think if I was listening in my car, mm-hmm. I would just be sitting there going, Oh, huh, that's funny. You you don't really oh, laugh really? out loud. I like uh, unless it's really funny. In person is so much mm. better. It's so much more engaging, and it feels more personal. And then everyone around you is laughing and it's a yeah. totally different experience so um i'm excited to go again and see doug benson because like i said the last time we went it was really funny and then he what who's this opener again because that guy's uh, really Graham funny Elwood yeah. is the one who um typically has been there every time mm-hmm. here he's not with him on the road a lot of the time like i listen to uh doug benson's podcast it's called uh doug loves movies and uh he does uh uh, kind of game show mm-hmm. uh, with movies uh, trivia, and uh, Grandma Wood isn't there most of the time. But on the the little tours, he's usually there. He mm-hmm. does all the little ones, I think, uh, and some of the big ones, I'm sure. But yeah, is he going to be there this year? Do you know? I don't know. Oh. I don't know who's um, opening for him. It'll probably be Grandma Wood. He's been there every year since I've done it. Yeah. Um, and Grandma Wood is very funny. Yeah, he was really uh, funny last time we went. So. Um, I'm just looking up who Kevin from the league is. Um, I, can't I know his, his name is la- like Heifer Neckenflat. His last name is really... Oh, uh, Ranazizi. Yep. It's Stephen Ranazizi. That's why I, it's hard to remember. Um, I just remember his last name was interesting, and that was... I couldn't remember. <laughs> I was surprised to find out that he was a stand-up comic. Yeah, I didn't know either. he's so good on the league, but it's so... You wouldn't expect those people to be stand-ups just because they're just actors. Mm-hmm. But uh, actually, Paul Shear is probably one of my favorite like improv actors. Uh, Paul Shear is the... Um, guy who plays Andre. Oh, really? He's fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, he, he he makes fun of himself in, like, almost everything he does. Yeah. But he, he, he's got a lot of really cool shows and a lot of improv stuff, and um, he's really funny. And then Nick Kroll, I, I, I found him on The League, and then now I watch, like, everything he does, because he's a great stand. Yeah, I didn't really... I'd seen him in, I think, stuff before, but I never paid that much attention until The League, and then I, it was, like, after... The, it's usually, like, once you get to know them from one thing, then you suddenly realize that they were in a bunch of shit that yeah. you'd already watched before, you just never right. paid attention that much to them. Um, but, yeah, he was one of those guys. That his Kroll, the Kroll show is pretty yeah. funny. and uh, I fucking love The Kroll Show. I watched a couple of his stand-ups. Yeah. He's hit or miss for me, because some of his characters, they just... They, I yeah. don't think... 
that they're funny and then some of them are really funny yeah so it, it just kind of depends and i think that that's just kind of how it goes with people who do characters oh, sure. is some of them just don't connect well it's with a people. skit show so yeah. skit shows i mean like snl i mean the, is, a lot of them are shit yeah. well even um in Kroll's stand-up he does like his characters yeah, too a lot so of them, yeah. it's like some there's like segments of his stand-up yeah. that i'll find funny and then other segments i'm just like uh, okay i'm just yeah. waiting for him to like move on to the next Thing. It's it's very different than somebody like uh, Louis C.K. or um, you know other big mm-hmm. uh, stand-ups like uh, Bill Burr or whatever. They yeah. just don't do impressions. So if you do impressions, you're really putting yourself out there like with this weird shit, and mm-hmm. it may not you know land for everybody. I just love um, observational comedy, which yeah. is what Louis C.K. does, and like oh, like the yeah. long form kind of storytelling that's just kind of ridiculous, yeah. and then just points out really funny, obvious things that people notice on like a daily basis, but nobody really talks about that much um and so that's typically the kind of stuff that i enjoy did you lose your pen i lost my pen <laughs> okay it just was bye never mind you're not gonna Sorry. use me to write on your fucking paper anymore i didn't mean Fuck to you. interrupt you no that's fine i was it was what i was saying right. what, do you prefer a particular type of no comedy i don't just have a particular type i love open to uh, anything. stand-up comedy a lot mm-hmm. i love stand-up comedy i like skit shows i like impersonations um I've been watching that stuff since I'm very little. I remember, um, you know, being alone in the house and finding stand-up comedy on cable and just watching it by myself, like, all day for, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've just always been into it, and uh, I've been lucky enough to go see a a few shows live, like uh, Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz and Bill Burr and Mm -hmm. Doug Benson. And uh, I just, it's my favorite form of entertainment um yeah. in general i like uh stand-up comedy or comedy like good comedy in general like whose line is anyway is really fun yeah i love i love um, whose line. i used to watch it all the time when i was a kid yeah i actually was watching it last weekend mm-hmm. they had it on yeah it's like the i guess newer there's a shows new ep- uh, new aisha tyler is like yeah. the new host of it but they still have um almost everybody that was in it like yeah. in its original run is back again so yeah, yeah, it's really good. I mean, everyone on there is so freaking good. Ryan Stiles and mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, Brady, uh, what is his name? Uh, I think it's, is it? Shit, it's something Brady. It's, I want to say Tom, but I think that's something No, else. that's a, that's a, <laughs> like a, a football, football player. player I think. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, they're all really good. Um, and, uh, oh, I, I used to watch uh, Kids in the Hall. I used to watch uh, The Whitest Kids You Know, I think, is one of the funniest skit yeah, shows I ever. Was, I was bummed that that show, I feel like it never really took off as well as I would have hoped. I think it was super popular for a certain group of people, a certain yeah. demographic, but then uh, it stopped. Um, the One of the main guys on there, uh, tr- Taylor Moore, or Travis Moore, I think is his name. Yeah. He's the the one of the main guys mm-hmm. who, who uh, was on that show. He was just on Joe Rogan's podcast, and they talked for like two hours or three hours and uh, it was just he's just like one of my favorite um i need to get his uh he just came out with a one-man show where he does a lot of songs no oh, really uh or a one-man stand-up special and i need to get that yeah they did a lot of songs and uh, yeah because you know like almost yeah um, almost like a couple oh, almost each season his name's trevor trevor, trevor Moore. Moore. that's trevor right Moore. yeah his parents were when he was growing up his parents were um Christian rock stars, like Christian rock band stars. Oh, so that's really? why he's so good at like all the music stuff because mm-hmm. he grew up with a bunch of music and stuff like that. So nice. God, now I want to watch Whitest Kids. You know, I haven't watched that show in so show. long because I uh, my favorite skit is still from the first season, the Abraham Lincoln one, where they're watching the Shakespeare, and then Abraham Lincoln is just like yelling down onto the stage. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that one. You don't remember? Oh, I, man, I, like I, 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 rem- I, can, I can picture someone in an Abraham Lincoln outfit yeah. and doing that, but there's so... I mean, that show went on for a few seasons, so... I think it was like five seasons. Because yeah. the last couple of seasons, they got cut down to just like 15-minute episodes because mm-hmm. it was like a half an hour, and oh, they yeah. like cut it down. I don't think I ever watched it when it was out. I just watched tons and tons of like... Like when it was on Netflix and on mm-hmm. YouTube, I just watched pieces and parts and just yeah. whatever. And well, luckily it's um, not something you had to watch in succession to understand. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, not at all. Um, and they had that whole like mini series of um, uh, the Civil War on drugs, which yeah. was fucking great. I watched it like twice. Um, and they're just like, what? Why is this stuff illegal? We gotta get to Washington and stop this. <laughs> and uh, and then they it, it just spirals out of control. Yeah. And, <laughs> but uh yeah they're really good and very edgy and um mm-hmm. stuff like that but no i uh i fucking love stand up yeah 
It's good I'm just, I think I'm just so picky about it that I, I have a hard time oh, finding really? people that I really, really get into yeah. and listen to a lot. So Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Louis C.K. and watching his show. Um, mm-hmm. I actually, um, he had an episode where his daughter, um, his like 12 year old daughter smokes a joint with some oh, friends. Oh, that's that episode? Gets really weird. Yeah, we just watched all those. Yeah. And um, so, and then it does flashbacks from when he smoked weed mm-hmm. in middle school and or high school. He and was he in high school. He steals like those scales he's and just. Yeah. And he was kind like, of like a dark kind of depressing i don't know like well it was it very realistic yeah it was I, that's what i liked about it it was, it was just exactly what it's like to be a kid and mm-hmm. and to be in in you know caught up in that kind of stuff and and well, maybe not exactly like <laughs> I, you know, I don't know exactly what was true there but um but i it was just really touching and really moving set of episodes mm-hmm. it was two episodes i think with her uh the first one was where he catches her and the second one is mostly his background of what happened to him when his parents caught him smoking weed. Mm-hmm. And they were just horrible with him. They were, like, super authoritative, and his mom kind of, like, told him to fuck off. Yeah. And then and then at the very end of the episode, it's his opportunity to do something different with his kid. Mm-hmm. And um, I wasn't sure what he was going to do. And then at the very end of the episode, he's like... She's like, oh, are you going to say, you're going to have some big, long speech? And he was and he's like, like, no. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just, just here. Yeah, I'm yep. here for you. I love you. And then they hugged. Mm-hmm. And it was so much, it was so perfect. Like, I, it was really emotional for me because I got caught smoking weed when I was very young in high school. And it was horrible. It yeah. was like, it was essentially, you do this again, you're kicked out. It was all very um, disciplinarian and and um, uh, very, like, anti relationship it was like fuck you kid fuck you it was literally like you're horrible you're terrible i hate you Mm -hmm. fuck you that's what it feels like when your parent is very disciplinarian uh, about something fairly minor that a lot of people deal with and you know it's pervasive throughout high school and junior high yeah but to see him do something different than his parents that was so compassionate and and warm toward his daughter Mm -hmm. and so much better you know like she doesn't need to be yelled at and all that stuff and and like told she's gonna die and you know oh your path you're going down the wrong path you're gonna do crack and you're gonna be all this stuff which is just the parent making shit up and just making them feel bad and guilting them and um it made me cry i like i'm actually emotional about it right now but um i'm hiding it so that's good (laughs) um but it was really, really touching. It was just, yeah. I, it made me really love Louis more because mm-hmm. all the rest of the stuff is just dick jokes and fart jokes, and they're all awesome. He's one of the, f- I think he he might be one of the funniest stand ups as far as observation. He's, my favorite, He's one of the most honest down. people yeah. ever. And, but to bring his kids into the show and to show, because so many people watch that show, to show how generations change their opinions and how how parents don't have to do what their parents did and how you don't have to come down so hard on on your 12 year old because they're you know experimenting or or they're you're they're trying to be part of a social group or Mm -hmm. whatever you know it's not it's not like why do you got to be so off put by it like why are you why are you having the emotion why are you so scared what is the parents so afraid of that they ostracize their child Without even asking any questions, mm-hmm. like, "Hey, why do you want to do this? What do you think about it? What's what are your friends thinking about it? What do you what do you think the long term effects are? You mm-hmm. know, like like that would be a good conversation." But um, so it was just a really really good episode, yeah, um, and uh, made me appreciate his writing and his show a lot more um, because he does get really you know most of the time he's not particularly compassionate in his stand-up it's kind Mm -hmm. of harsh yeah like oh my kids are fucking stupid or whatever Mm -hmm. you know like oh she's three she doesn't know anything (laughs) i know way more than her um but this one it it, it kind of off his stand-up is so funny and real but it's also a little bit harsh yeah on everyone in the world Mm -hmm. it's very judgmental which is good but um the show is a lot more realistic. It's yeah. a lot more like real life and like the way that he really fucks things up or the way that he doesn't want to be the way he is sometimes and has to readjust and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, so anyway, I just uh, thought that was an incredible episode in general yeah. for me personally because I, I just I love to see parents, you know, being compassionate toward the fucking child who really depends on them and cares about what they think about them and is their whole you know the well, and a, I think a lot of parents do that same they did those same things when they were a kid and yeah. then 
to like kind of criticize your own kid for doing the yeah. same thing you did, then you're just kind of a hypocrite at that point. He yeah. even talks about that in one of his stand-ups. He's like, how can I tell my kids not to do drugs when it's like the solution to all of their problems yeah. at that point yeah. in their life? Like, and yeah. so it, it's like obviously drugs are bad, but th- like marijuana isn't like it's not nowhere near as bad <laughs> it's like a lot of stuff out there and for somebody just to experiment with it and check well, it out it's not yeah. the end of the fucking world the problem is i think people don't understand how drugs work i don't think they understand psychology and biology at mm. all parents just are freaking out because they don't know anything and they, they just do what their parents did or they do what they think they should and they're worried about the the reflection of them as a parent but if you're a good parent most of the time, your kids won't get into really hard drugs. They won't be, and they'll come to you with the questions. They'll come to you with the struggles that they're having. Yeah. They won't go straight to their friends and the drugs and the lowest, you know, possible human beings that don't know anything. The, if you have a good bond with your your child when they're in their teens, it seems like they're going to go to you more. Mm-hmm. That you're going to be open to it. You're going to be able to talk to them. You're not going to make them feel terrible, and you'll be honest with them and and let them know what you think or whatever, and then you can both look up information if you don't know it yeah but you know to just it seems like you know by the time they're 12 you've had 12 years to foster a relationship that involves um communication and honesty and all that so why not if you if you're at, you know if you're 12 if your kid's 12 or 13 and they hate you mm-hmm. there's a reason for that yeah. and they don't go to you for a reason and so you just make it a lot worse when you're super um, aggressive and angry and, you know, irrational about the whole situation anyway. And drugs are fucking pervasive. Kids are kids are getting drugged at, like, five and six because of ADHD and shit mm-hmm. or because of uh, bipolar or because of depression. It's retarded. And yeah. parents just they, – they'll shill out these drugs that their doctors recommend or psychiatrists recommend – fucking their kids up permanently for the rest of their lives because these drugs have permanent effects Mm -hmm. uh, or at least really long lasting especially in addiction reasons but the kid wants to smoke weed and that's if it's illegal then you freak out there's the line right there (laughs) once they're 18 then you know you can get rid of them or once they're 21 they can drink and you don't have a problem but if they drink when they're younger you have a problem. It's just illogical. It's mm-hmm. it's Im- it's uh, it's like an emotional, personal reaction to like like how you think of yourself, and uh, instead of just being kind of like I don't know, more self aware and understand that you probably did that kind of stuff as a, as as a youngster. And what's the circumstances like in high school? It's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's like a prison. You go there. You have to be there. You hate. Everyone hates somebody there. Yeah. It's just a it's not conducive. Fuck of hormones and angst well yeah and angst and involuntary <laughs> uh, things you, you don't have any choice there and, yeah and uh you you know you've got tons of varieties of of kids and cultures all intermingling and having different values and and different parents and you know a good majority of them are being abused in some way mm-hmm. in some fashion somewhere in their life and they just you know n- no one gives a shit no one you know the the this the the teachers aren't like I mean, they, they probably care, but they can't do anything because yeah. they have 30, 40 kids in their classroom, all of which have their own individual issues. And, you know, just because, you know, one kid could have a really great household and the other one has a terrible household, they get treated the same at school. There's mm-hmm. no individuality there. So I, I can, you know, high school is fucking difficult and people should not take it lightly that their kids just gonna do a great job and just take everything right and do Mm -hmm. everything perfect and you know and then you're gonna get angry when they aren't perfect when you work at you know fucking walgreens like you know stop judging your child for being a child I think it's like easier one. to just be angry and yell and instead of actually taking the time to ask questions and, yeah. and find out how they feel and be empathetic. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. And a lot of, well, and it, it's a reaction. Yeah. It's not it's a, just, it's not a, like a, it's not a, it's not a, like you don't, you don't learn more when you just react. Mm-hmm. You have to stop and be like, hey, why am I reacting so crazy yeah. toward my children that I'm responsible, you know, that I made and I'm responsible for their entire existence? And I think why in, in the so case of, of like marijuana, for example, since it is illegal, I think that's why 
people like jump the gun so much on it because it's illegal like yeah, it's a, they it's a can criminal act or whatever. like i mean if they get caught doing it then you know they can they can get in big trouble for drug possession or whatever that's not which you I don't think get is, in that much trouble yeah. it's not that big well i know but i think but i think that's why I mean, like, I remember being in school, like, that's all they yeah. talk about. Like, you know, you take, like, health courses, and they're just yeah. like, oh, drugs are fucking bad, yeah. and da-da-da-da. So, like, it was hammered into me yeah. that I should not touch any of that stuff. And I never have. Yeah. And I've had opportunities, and I don't think less of people who smoke weed. I don't... I would rather somebody smoke weed than drink alcohol. Yeah. Just because, I, in my opinion, alcohol is fucking terrible. I just don't do any of it because I don't care. I have no interest in doing any of it. Sure. I might one day, just for the... I have a bad day, and I'm just like, fuck it, I want to experiment with something weird. But... <laughs> At this point in my life, I've be never pretty, had... What the fuck day yeah, is that? Yeah, I that, don't know. I'm, but I hope you don't have that Even uh, Even with alcohol, I've only... I mean, I have drinking a few times here. I just don't like it. I don't like yeah. the taste of it. I don't like the way yeah. it makes me feel. And then with marijuana, I'm just like, I don't care. I don't want to try it. Yeah. I don't like cigarettes. So I don't like want to smoke. I don't want to smoke anything. Ugh. So... I, for me, I just have never had any interest in it, so I've never had like a horse in the fucking race for drugs yeah. and alcohol, but or, you, like with marijuana yeah. legalization. Like I just don't care because I'm not interested in it. So I, I think the biggest difference between when we were kids and kids now is that the information related to drugs is so much more prevalent that uh, you can't demonize something that we know all about. Mm -hmm. We like when my parents were growing up. They were right in the midst of the anti-psychedelics, anti-drugs, anti-marijuana um, information. They didn't have any science out there, so mm -hmm. they literally thought you would probably like you would you would end up doing uh, harder drugs. You would you could die. They had just all this misinformation. So when they hear you're doing this kind of stuff, they think, well, it's illegal, which means that my kid could get in trouble. I could get in trouble. Um, their kid, you know, they they have these extreme visions of what could happen. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to start doing crack. They're going to yeah, you just steal. go to the top shelf every yeah, they, time. They, they, they ex you know, it just gets um, uh, exaggerated so much. So. It, it does make sense, but now I think, you know, like like if, if you were a parent, if I were a parent, it would be, I wouldn't even, I would never demonize anyone who, like, even did any drug because I know so much more about drugs in general. Mm -hmm. Drugs are nine, you know, like most of the time, I'm not going to give a percentage because I'm making this up <laughs> based on what I think. Um, it's self-medication. So all you're doing when you demonize the drug user or the addict is you're, you're punishing them for having a terrible childhood in which they're now medicating themselves ab against. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, what the fuck is wrong with drugs? Everybody does drugs. This is a massive drug subsidized culture. Yeah, that's true. But, but everyone's drinking. Everybody's taking pills. They're giving pills to everybody. They're, you know, really. Well, like you were saying, that people Adderall don't think about it when it's, it's prescribed bullshit. by a doctor. Yeah. Granted, its effects are worse. Yeah. Then. More people die from cigarettes and alcohol than have ever died from marijuana. Mm -hmm. And um, more people have died from, like, um, a, a lot of prescription pills um, than, yeah. than anybody even knows about. But because it's all it's all part of the, you know, the, the beautiful narrative that everybody wants to talk about, <laughs> they, you know, it's like th there's no distinction. You're, we put things in our body for a reason, and that's fine. We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to fuck ourselves up. We're allowed to make ourselves better. Leave us alone. Yeah. Leave me the fuck alone. I can do whatever I want. You can't stop person. anybody anyway. So it's just it's just stupid, and it's just there's a lot of money in it, and criminals, and mm -hmm. you know making it all criminal, uh, you know, uh, really helps out the government and stuff. So oh yeah, it's just it's just crazy. But um, anyway, uh, I guess that's what we ended up talking about there. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it was a really good episode of uh, Louis. Yeah, but um. You've been watching another show too, Daredevil. Like Daredevil? It's so good. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you like Marvel movies and mm -hmm. comic book stuff, um, it's awesome. It's uh, I just like my wife and I just that was our day yesterday. Yeah. Was just we ran some errands and then just watched a ton of Daredevil. It's very engrossing. It's very well done. I was. I didn't go into it thinking very high, like with high expectations, because Daredevil's he's like a cool character, but never one that I was. He's not like Batman or anything where I'm just like, fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. like. Um, so I wasn't like that stoked about the show leading up to it. I yeah. knew that they were doing one, but I didn't pay that much attention to it. And I didn't think that. I I think in my mind I was like, it's a TV show, so it's probably not going to have like the budget 
to like be cool and awesome yeah it's going to be pretty like limited um but it's surprisingly really well done like it, mm-hmm. it's got a really engaging story the character like there's not a character that i didn't like even like the villain they they do such a good job fleshing him out that you kind of understand where he's coming from mm-hmm. um and because typically there's always like at least one or two characters that just drive me fucking crazy in a tv show and they just annoy me but there's a show that i liked all the characters they all have like um really interesting stories to them and mm-hmm. then the fight choreography is really fucking cool um yeah. But yeah, it's good. It was just like watching like a 13-hour Marvel movie that's really violent and a lot darker than their yeah. other stuff. Um, and it's a Netflix only, I think. And yep, then you, yeah, the Netflix whole thing is on Netflix right now. You just, mm-hmm. you just watch the yep, whole fucking yep, thing. Yeah, like put all 13 episodes on there. Wow, so. that's a lot. Yeah. I, I watched an episode really late uh, the other night, and uh, and I was intrigued. Uh, I, yeah. I'm going to watch more of it. I'm very uh, curious. Um, I'm more excited about Game of Thrones starting, which is tonight. Today, I I'm know. Fucking watch oh, that man. I, yep, that's, yeah, that's happening that's tonight for sure. Um, I, I can't Why believe can't there's Game another fucking episode. Why can't be like fucking Netflix? Why can't they just put the whole season? I gotta watch that shit. One Dude, if they put time. the whole season, people would lose their fucking minds. I know. They would go crazy. The I whole wonder if thing HBO will do that because they're doing that HBO Go where they're gonna launch it as its own. It's called like, uh, Now. Streaming, or, or, yeah, HBO yeah. Now. That's HBO Go Now right now is what it's called. But HBO Now in the yeah, future, right? Yeah. Um, yeah well, that'd it's, be it's crazy if they're just like, oh, now that we're doing our streaming service, we'll just put it all on well, there. Well, I'm sure all, it's all done. It's all done, yeah. I would imagine. So, but they're they're just they're a little bit more old school than Netflix. You know, mm-hmm. they've been around. HBO's been around for so long that they're probably gonna keep that standard so that people can have that that week to really get amped up for the next episode and then another episode and I'm really they curious can to maximize see, that you know suspense um what happens with like multimedia there like as far as film goes because Netflix is becoming such a huge player in like the TV show business and now if you can take something like Daredevil which they did a movie for in like 2003 which didn't do that well and wasn't yeah. that good don't recommend it but they turn that around and then now they do like this really amazing TV show out of it like how many more things like are they going to start converting into just TV shows? Because then they have more time to tell oh, really engaging yeah. stories. And I'm sure that the the budget that they used for Daredevil wasn't crazy high because there's not a lot of special effects because he doesn't have um, like real superpowers. He's just really yeah. fucking skilled. Like he has like he's, heightened senses, he has disabled from powers, the radioactive waste that got in his eyes. Yeah. So I mean, he can like hear fucking way better than anybody in the world. But yeah. um, so I mean. It would be tough, I guess, for them to do like a Iron Man because there's so much CG and effects, and they have to have a pretty solid. Budget yeah, for that's what like I that, liked but. about Daredevil so far is that there isn't a ton of like, ex- like so far there isn't a ton of explosions. It's it's not somebody can't fly. Mm-hmm. It's it's just kind of like it's a little bit more down to earth, and yeah. and I like that in in vigilante stories, you know. And they acknowledge um, um, the Marvel movies, like you can tell it all takes place in the same universe because there's con- they'll see news articles oh, about really? like things that happened in the first Avengers, and they'll mm-hmm. talk about um, the characters and the other stuff. So it's like all part of this big cohesive world. Like Marvel's is killing it, with yeah, creating this really big cinematic universe where all these characters just exist in the same world and are all yeah. kind of of parts of uh, it's fucking crazy um I, but, uh, sorry i was gonna say i'm just curious to see how many more like if they're gonna if we're gonna start seeing oh, less yeah. movies coming out and more people just jumping onto this fucking tv show um i think it's already anyway, happening i think yeah. television is the current entertainment medium and um the new you know um avenues like hulu netflix uh, amazon prime um uh, hbo now uh it, it just makes TV shows that much better. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather watch. I'm. I. I, I don't even. Well, the one two hour movie. How does that compete with the fucking, you know, forty hours of an amazing show that you yeah. can just watch a ton of, and and you have just all the luxury of watching at your house and pausing and whatever you want to do. I wouldn't even be surprised if they started doing some kind of like, like out and about kind of entertainment, like like a show at a theater, like where you mm-hmm. watch like an episode at a theater or something. I think that'd be fun. Um, I think we'll see more hybrid projects. They're doing that. Yeah, like right. Sony just picked up the Dark Tower. Because oh, that's been what? like in limbo. What? 
Uh, like they keep bringing it up and then yeah. it's it like shuffled back and then ends up in limbo. Well, if they Sony make that into a show, they better. Well, what they're they doing better not the make a movie out of it. Dark Tower is they're doing a movie for like because the first book, The Gunslinger, isn't that long. Of a no, book. that it's one you like could do 250 pages. You could do like it's a two introductory hour movie. kind of thing. Um, but what their what their plan is is they're going to do a movie to start it, and I think they're doing it also to, to get the money. Yeah. And, and then they're going to do a TV show because some of those books are like a thousand pages. They're so intricate. And so it seems like what their plan is is they want to do movies and then like a season or two of a TV show and then like another movie. Yeah. Like it's like a mix of as both long as it's all the like the same actors, the same director, the same, and they do a really good job with it. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's a movie or a show. Yeah. The problem is that they're always switching directors and actors and f- cinematographers and it just doesn't look the same. And so yeah. you're just like well, like all this fucking Spider Man movies. Like who gives a fuck about that? I, I know. Everyone just that they again, only too. do it so that they can, so people can argue about which Spider Man they like. Mm-hmm. I, who gives a shit? It's fucking. I hate Spider Man in general. <laughs> I don't He's like my it least <laughs> favorite like guy, other than Daredevil. But now I have more respect. I I have a lot more respect for Daredevil. Yeah. After watching the show, I'm like, now I'm kind of a Daredevil fan. So yeah, it's it's he's kind of the anti-hero because he's actually not. He doesn't have superpowers. He mm-hmm. he does kind of, but it's not like, it's not like uber out of. It's just a special ability. Yeah. It's not. He something gets his that, ass kicked a lot in that yeah. show, which is nice. I like I like yeah. seeing him more realistic. End up in situations where he was definitely over his head, and he over he like over you know yeah emphasized his own abilities. Yeah, like, it's nice. He was too confident. You gotta have flawed flawed characters yeah. or else, you know, they're not realistic. And then there's, you know, there's there's moments where he's like, starts to question what he's doing. Like, it, yeah. it's, it's just really well done. Yeah. I couldn't imagine them do- doing a movie for that Daredevil. Like, after seeing what they did with the TV show, I'm just like, no fucking way they could have told such a great story with no. like a two hour movie. No. Like, it, there's just so much they would have left out. And the like, characters would have just been, yeah. like all the side characters would have had probably just no, it would have just been about Daredevil yeah. and then and, like the villain, but now yeah. you all these side characters got their own parts, and they all yeah. feel important. And you can make a whole, you know, hour long, forty five minute long episode about one main person mm-hmm. in the show, and it totally fits, and it gives you a lot more context, and it just makes you more personally invested in everything going on. Yeah. Like, can you imagine a Breaking Bad movie? It'd be fucking terrible. Yeah. It'd be like just another drug movie. Mm-hmm. But you do the whole show and you really like, you know, drag out this, you know, major character change in a person, you know, from being a teacher to being a, you know, drug pin, uh, kingpin, yeah. drug pin, pin, uh, king linchpin. Whatever the uh, professional or unprofessional term. I don't know. They could be professional. <laughs> I mean, as long as they, uh, you know, they treat their employees well. Um, Good health benefits. Yeah. We talked about that on the last episode, too. Um, yeah, so anyway, exciting new shows coming up. Um, I know, they have a bunch of... Netflix yeah. has, like, a whole bunch of Marvel shows yeah. in the works. They have, like, Iron Fist they're going to do, mm. a Nick Fury one, Jessica that, Jones. That, aren't those all p- porn titles? <laughs> <laughs> Iron <of>. Fist, Jessica <laughs> Jones. <laughs> but uh, I think that the Marvel is probably going to do that with all their, like, lower tier, like, not as well-known characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because all those characters make up the Defenders, which is like a, it's like the Avengers, just a different group. <laughs> Comic so books one are is very like complicated. De- one is defending, and the other one is avenging. avenging yeah. But they're so, really doing so the same So when the shit. Defenders fail, then the Avengers avenge yeah. what the Defenders couldn't defend. Um, is how <laughs> they're always works. fucking up, and the <laughs> Avengers got to get in there. Because they're, they're like, like lower the A-team. Yeah, I know. They are. Yeah. Literally, Avengers, it's A. It starts oh, the But word, not literally, so because the A-team <laughs> has... Uh, uh, the fucking Mr. T. They should do like a TV. They should do a movie just called 80s Montage Movie. Yeah. And it's just the A team teams yeah. up with like the Avengers. Yeah. And it's just like all these it, like fucking. If somebody man. could get their fucking act together <laughs> and make a good parody like they used to do in the late 80s mm-hmm. with uh, like the Naked Gun movies, mm-hmm. they were good parodies. Um, or uh, my favorite parody movie is um, uh, Not Another Teen Movie. Mm-hmm. My favorite. I watched it a million times. I think it's great. Um, if they could make a good one, they could make a great parody movie with all the stupid comic book stuff nowadays. Yeah. Um, or 80s or whatever. Freaking whatever. I don't know what's popular, but Game of Thrones. You can make a whole parody just on Game of Thrones. Yeah. It'd be great. They did, like, SNL did one, too. Yeah, they just did one. Uh, and, like, Lord of the Rings and shit, but... Um, yeah. Anyway. Cool. Probably wrap it up. Yeah, we should probably We're a little over half an hour again before this. Well, yeah, out. it's like 37 minutes. Oh, okay. uh, it'll cut it off. So we'll need to be somewhere. I'll get that figured out eventually. O'clock. Yeah, and I do have to be somewhere <laughs> in like 10 minutes, so I should probably get going. Um, but cool. This was fun. Yeah. I think uh, the latter half was a little more energetic than the first half. You just got to find the footing to climb properly. Yeah, and we climbed a mountain today. Yes. So cool. 
Well, I kind of wish we had more time, but uh, now uh, we'll have more to talk about next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks, everybody, for listening, watching. Hello, everybody out there. If you're still with us by now, then uh, you're a fucking trooper. Um, <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you next week. And stuff. <laughs> and stuff. It's still Goodbye, everybody.